got you. We nailed it. We got this. We got it. Hello. It is two for Tuesday at my sewing room. With Chelsea and Leah. With Chelsea and Leah. I'll be <laughs> Leah today, I suppose. I suppose I'll be Chelsea if I have to. Do you want to trade? Okay, I'm Leah. And I'll be Chelsea. <laughs> that sounds easier today. Chelsea, what are you going to teach me today? <laughs> Uh, we are going to talk a little bit about uh, embroidery placement today and some of the things and tools you might need for different types of embroidery in different locations. So marking tools are a big part of what you'll need for depending what you're working on. There's a couple that I use all the time when I'm embroidering. So you've got two of those on the table. There's a third one, Thank you. but it's not going to work great on the fabric we have today. So. Um, we've, we've got two options that are all both great options to start with. But you kind of need something to write on light fabrics and something to write on dark fabrics. Yes, and I think we're using something light today. Yeah. Um, so was that last week or was that the week before? It was the week before. It was the week before. All the weeks are melting together. <laughs> they are one. They are one. Mm -hmm. In previous Chelsea and Leah time on <laughs> uh, Tools and Techniques Thursday, um, we made a really fantastic modern clutch bag. But we did the magic of television and pre-embroidered it we sure did. before our live. So we're going to talk a little bit about placement. Um, if you wanted to get your modern clutch bag made, how would you go about uh, marking for embroidery on this before you get started? Mm -hmm. So, uh, you have the overhead camera there, right? Yes. Yeah. So if we switch to that, because you've also got a ruler there, that'll help. I sure do. So when you're looking at uh, the finished size on this modern clutch, um, it's not a square bag. So you'll have to keep that in mind. And kind of the total height that you want your embroidery will be somewhere just a smidge shorter than we made ours. Because ours is just a little big because the embroidery rolls around to the bottom. A little bit. A little bit. But that's okay. Um, so on this particular project uh, with Modern Clutch, if you're looking at something like this, um, the embroidery is right centered in that size. So the Modern Clutch is not a square piece of fabric for the exterior. It is a rectangle and we learned that on Thursday. <laughs> yeah, when I when I had Chelsea sew the pocket on wrong. That was a fun time. Yeah. So anyway, um, essentially, the longer side is the top. top. And the shorter side is your sides. So where you're going to be marking for this, you'll have to account for your seam allowance mm -hmm. and a little bit more. Because you'll have the space on the top for the hardware. And I think our seam allowance... Was, was half an inch up Half there. an inch, because we had to sew it together first, and yeah. then we jammed it into this hardware, which was really easy. And this is about a quarter inch. Yeah. So about three quarters of an inch is going to disappear off the top of this. Yeah. Okay. So we marked center across, and then top of our embroidery, we didn't want to go more than three quarters of an inch up. The sewing pattern we used from the So Crafty Design CD from OESD, um maxed out at that like three and a half inch height and took up our entire space mm -hmm. so you don't have this entire space to work with you just have from three quarters of the way up to about three inches down to set your embroidery and then you don't have the full width of this you have about six inches there to yeah play happily quite a bit less because it all tucks into here there's actually a side seam there yeah. right there so do you want to measure off that embroidery that we did there? Yeah, sure. So our embroidery measures from the top of the S to the bottom of the W. Maybe if I put my ruler the right way around. I was just hoping you'd do backwards math. I was going to say, <laughs> it's eight inches tall. <laughs> it's not. It's I not. promise. Uh, it is about three and seven eighths tall, but you could just round that up to four. Um, tall by... Six and a half? Close to six and a half, yeah. So sticking with something on this particular project, just a little bit smaller. Something like three inches tall 
would be pretty I think th pretty spectacular. Yeah, three inches tall would probably be the nicest because it would be about right there. Yeah. Yeah, that would be lovely. So that's how I would go in and gauge the size of your embroidery before you get started. Uh, another solid way of working through something like this, if you're not sure, is to sew out the embroidery and kind of pin it on to something. You're probably not doing the embroidery on the first very first clutch you make. Um, I would say just make the first clutch just without the embroidery so you know how it goes together. Totally. Um, or if you're here at the store, you know, hold your embroidery up to our sample at the store. <laughs> we'll so, have him post it soon. Yeah. Yeah, so that's how I would mark for this. Um, on something like the black leather or a really f wild print, um, do you want to draw some lines on that? Oh yeah, of course I do. Um, what kind of lines do you want? Do you want squiggles? No, <laughs> draw on with that ruler. And um, the the pen Chelsea's got on her hand is the uh, Clover Fine White Tip pen. Um, it is fantastic for marking on dark fabrics. Mark from this side; it looks less crazy. So. But this this pen's a little bit weird because the line doesn't show up right away. It kind of fades over time. Or shows up over time. The reverse of fading, what's that? It like appears over time. It ombres into life. Ombres into existence. <laughs> <laughs> are those are those words? <laughs> I love are those words? ombre, you know. I don't think that's the words. <laughs> I think it is today. Okay. okay. Well, I marked kind of my top point here. It'll show up. Yeah. We'll give it a minute. They're on camera. Definitely, definitely visible. Um, yeah, I can definitely see this line clearly. This line has started to show up. Might not have gone over it enough. Sometimes you need like a, a couple little doodles. Or you just have to give it time. Because uh, it magics itself into existence shortly. But, but how patient am I? I am not patient. That's why I'm going to doodle over it more. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Do, do, do. So that would be the top, most top center point that we could reach. Yeah. We want to reach a bit lower than that, though. Yeah. So if you know, you know that don't go any higher than this, and then center between that and essentially the bottom crease mm -hmm. fold of the bag... That's where you'd want to center your embroidery. So you could actually measure off a center point in there to have the embroidery right centered. Which is probably how I would um, approach that. So if we measure this, and my bag stands at about four and a quarter tall, including the hardware. Actually, we should use no hardware. Then I can measure off my line. I drew three inches. We are three quarters of an inch down. Four inches tall. So my most center point would be two inches below this line. Right, put that down straight today. And then it will slowly show up. Yeah. There's, there it is. Yes. That's my center point. Yep. Well, and if it was a print um, and a pattern like this where it's a very symmetrical print, we could have shimmied that over so it's right bag on center totally then you wouldn't notice yeah but assuming you're doing not exciting embroidery on exciting fabric it might be a little much <laughs> you're probably doing exciting embroidery on plain plainer fabric yes probably which i do have some of that today yeah um so then getting this in the hoop is the next exercise mm -hmm. and something like this where the design is longer than it is tall most of the hoops that we have um on our domestic embroidery machines um, will fit into your machine with the, if you turn that the way it would sit in the machine, I would probably turn the embroidery as well. Just because we have a little more width that way. So using that center line that was marked for the center of the design this way and this way is where I would aim to have that land in the hoop. Um, this particular piece of fabric, you could, you could hoop this, and um, the interfacing that it has on it will help stabilize some of your stitches, and you could just add in either some 
uh, clean and tear, or you could hoop with a um, uh, sticky back stabilizer. There's a couple different options. Um, depending how dense the embroidery you're doing on your project is, will change what stabilizer you might want. You could go ahead and hoop all of that. Um, something like this where it already has some interfacing on it. Um, you could also use a sticky back stabilizer. This would be very hard to hoop. <laughs> uh, you would probably embroider before you put the Most Peltex. Most definitely. Yeah. Before the Peltex. That's but, what we did last time. Yeah, so you'd still do the other, like the fusible fleece and the other interfacings that are in that bag mm -hmm. first. And then the sticky back stabilizer would probably be really easy to get this in, I think, after. Yeah. Just plop it down. Yeah, and using the templates nice on your hoop, you could get that centered awesome. in the hoop. And then rotate your design appropriately so that it is right way up on your bag when you're all done. Easy peasy. Yeah. So learning how to rotate on your machine is part of that. So that would be my first marking tool and rough placement for something like a clutch bag. Figure out where the top of your embroidery can be, figure out the total area that you want to fill, and then measure to center. This little okay. clutch is quite a small area, quite a small place to center. Something like a tote bag is quite different because you've got a bigger space to work with. So much space. So much space. Um, the next thing you might want to figure out how to embroider for placement is a tea towel. I have some right here. <laughs> You're the I, OSD tea towels. I came, They're lovely. Oh my gosh, I was so excited. So my boyfriend bought a new trailer, and I think we need a tea towel. You totally need a tea towel. I think I think it needs one. My boyfriend says no, but he's I wrong. say he's wrong. He's wrong. It needs a tea towel. Um, Tea towel embroidery is probably one of the easiest places to put embroidery. Um, you can put just about any embroidery on a tea towel. Um, make your kitchen your own. Make your bathroom your own. Make your laundry room your own. Where else can you put towels? Your trailer. Your trailer. Your office where you sew. Oh, yeah. Because maybe you get a little damp when you spray yeah. things. you have a laundry sink. You have yeah. a... I don't know. Tea towels are cute. They can go everywhere. <laughs> They, they also make fantastic gifts. Oh, and you can make them into an apron. Yeah. They turn into a really cute tool belt apron. Oh, that's giving me all the Tuesday alarms. <laughs> <laughs> we'll turn all of those off. <laughs> it's not. Not that kind of Tuesday. It's not that kind of Tuesday. We're not doing all those Tuesday things. Okay, so hooping on a tea towel. Um, things to keep in mind when you're starting with your tea towel. Chelsea's got this... Uh, sideways right now. I sure do. Um, That's okay. the top with this little hanger, right? Yeah, top okay. with the hanger. Um, tea towels generally, if you're looking at a tea towel hanging on a... Do you want to fold it like you'd have it hanging? Yes. Uh, you want to think about how this tea towel will hang before you go embroider it. You can thirds it? Thirds it, because you're fancy, and you can fold into thirds. So fancy. And then so, if your tea towel is hanging like so, or bath towel or any other towel, um, the places you want to watch, do you want to scoot it up on camera just a oh, little bit? Yes. So bottom of the tea towel down by Chelsea. Um, when you're looking at this, uh, as much as some things like this tote bag, the modern clutch, uh, centering that embroidery in the space makes the most sense. Um, tea towels that does not. Tea towels are uh, not the same. Um, if you set the embroidery right in the middle, everything looks super awkward. That's going to look so ridiculous. It looks floaty. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Oh, there's a good question up there. I'm going to answer this before we move on. Um, would you wash your tea towels first? I did not today. You did not today. Generally, I would say yes. Pre-wash your linens. Um, however, you're going to do laundry. Um, if you're doing white tea towels and you know they're going to end up in a kitchen where uh, people like to uh, use your pretty tea towels for not pretty things like wiping tomato sauce off their faces. Um, I have small children at home. <laughs> this, is, this has been a good issue at my house. Um, or, or, you know, barbecue sauce next to the barbecue. Whatever it is, all the people who, who don't appreciate fine white linens um, will abuse your linens. Uh, if you are using isocord thread, on your tea towels and you are embroidering on white tea toweling, isocord is color fast. So you could bleach your white tea towels if they've been embroidered with isocord thread. I'm gonna need that. I live with three boys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> so, so that is something to keep in mind. Um, using the right thread will keep your project from fading as you throw it through the wash and launder it as you will. So lots of us wash our kitchen towels. Um, I wash my kitchen towels in hot water and a hot dryer. So if that is how you will launder your towels, I would pre-wash that way in case there is any shrinkage. Um, most of the pre-made towels that we have, either from Kimberbell um, or OESD, we have a few other blank tea towels already pre-made here in store. Most of them have minimal shrinkage, but you don't want to find out that they had more shrinkage than you expected afterwards. Um, I would pre-wash your towels. And if you're buying something like a bath towel, pre-wash. You'll just get rid of that first layer of fuzz before you embroider. Um, a little bit softer to work with. Than... Hmm. Maybe we should do a, a bath towel next time. Maybe. That sounds fun. Yeah, bath towels are great too. Um, so other things, yeah. Excellent question. Yes, pre-wash, and then figure out where you want your embroidery. <laughs> so um, if this was our embroidery and you're looking at it from up top, um, up in the middle, it's kind of weird and floaty. That looks really weird. It looks really weird. Um, the magical distance up from the hem of your tea towel is about an inch to an inch and a half. Okay. From that hem, so where the stitching is on the hem or from the, the bottom of the hem? So if you did inch and a half from the bottom, you'd okay. be an inch from the hem. bottom right there there we go that looks much better so that's generally where you where you would place that type of embroidery okay. so it might be low it might be tall it might be wide whatever the case is anchoring it to the bottom of your tea towel will keep it from being floaty and weird in your room Ooh, what if my tea towel has a stripe on it then you would anchor off that stripe okay so something like a uh, lots of bath towels have you know, the textured area that is flat instead of <laughs> towel-y. <laughs> I'm sure there's a technical name for that. <laughs> flat, not... <laughs> yes, flat, not towel -y. That's the statement I'm sticking with. Um, the part you don't want to use to dry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the part that makes your towel interesting. <laughs> um, some, like the bands that you get on towels. <laughs> um, whether it's, whether it's a colored stripe or a change in texture, whatever the case is, that would be something like a line right there. I like your stripe. And then you want to anchor off of that. Usually a quarter to half an inch up from that. Oh, okay. Quarter to half an inch. So it'd be kind of there if that was our stripe. Yeah. Oh, that still looks quite nice. Yeah, so it's still anchored at the bottom, okay. but the towel itself has another more solid anchor. So that's roughly where you're aiming. Um, if you're going to mark your towel for this, um, there's lots and lots of ways to, to go in and mark your towels. Um, for something like this where I know where I want the bottom to be, I'm just going to mark where I want the bottom and center to be. And instead of marking off the center of my hoop, I'm going to mark off the side, and then I can use the height of the embroidery to figure out the other distance. So if we're centering off the bottom here, uh, you could go in and draw in that first line. Cool. But you might need to give your iron a quick, or your towel a quick press. I sure do. Get it a little bit flatter. And I think you, yeah, you've got it the right way there. <laughs> It's the noise that irons make. It's the noise that irons make, is it? <laughs> Love it. I didn't know irons made noises. <laughs> yes, that is the noise they make. Okay, I'm good with that. Do what you gotta do. <laughs> Alright, so now I can draw my first line. So we'll go, let's go an inch and a half up the, from the bottom. Sounds like a nice number. Remember, that's going to be the bottom of your embroidery. And this time you're using a wash away blue marker. Yes. They're fantastic. I sure am. Because white iron off pens don't show up on white tea towels. They do not. They do not. Um, Best way to find the center 
of the bottom is to give it a quick fold. And you could press that crease in or just give it a quick fold. Give it a light press, I think, but don't, not on the marker that you just drew. Because that'll heat set my marker and then it'll be stuck forever. It might be, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that won't be your friend. Good to know. I'll press it all around it. We could have done that in the other order. <laughs> I I like my adventures, though. They're Me fun. too. All right. So I didn't hit the marker line with my iron. And we have a nice little mark there. Draw that in. So right. the design that you're using today for your tea towel um, we grabbed a design from the lunch block lunch box quilts retro campers pattern and we're we're gonna do home is where the hitch is it sounded really cute. That's about the right size for tea towel. It's going to be adorable. A little bit of applique in it too, which is lots of fun. Um, this particular design, um, if you don't know how big a design is, usually usually your instructions for your project will give you an idea of your dimensions. Um, in this case, um, pulling it up on your machine will give you a clue as to which hoop you need. Because it'll show you the smallest hoop that it will fit in. Um, it'll also uh, show you the size. And if you don't know how to change the size between millimeters and inches on your machine. Um, it's worth learning. Most machines you can switch. Not every machine can switch, but most can. And I'm, I know my hoop size is in millimeters, but I like visualize embroidery in inches. <laughs> I love that. It's really awkward. <laughs> I switch back and forth all the time. Um, so this design is 4.9 inches tall, by 5.2 inches wide. So finding the center point for this, um, we could find half of 4.9 and go up from where we want our bottom to mark our center point. So, oops, lost my marker gap. We'll go about 2.5 yep. up from our line. Take it back to there. <laughs> That was my first line that's an inch and a half up from the bottom. And yeah. now I've drawn a line two and a half inches up from that line. Yeah. On my side. So that would put the top of your embroidery right about there. That's fantastic. Yeah. And then I still have more than enough space side to side because I have about seven inches. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Beautiful. Um, so lots of different stabilizers you could use to embroider on a towel. Um Often when I do towels, I use uh, Aquamesh and 505 and 505 my towel and then set it in the hoop. That sounds like a good plan. However, I brought you Aquamesh Plus. Oh, that sounds fun, too. Because I will... Aquamesh Plus is lovely to work with. If you don't like using aerosol sprays, um, Aquamesh Plus is great. So, um, Aquamesh Plus is a sticky back wash away stabilizer. You'll be hooping in a large oval hoop. And your stabilizer is just a wee bit long. So if you leave the bulk of that at the back, it won't be in the camera shot. <laughs> That's me. That might be loose enough. Might yeah. not be. This is always fun to get in. Um, so Aquamesh Plus is a two-layer stabilizer. So the super shiny side is the paper layer. It's going to go up on top of your inner hoop. Underneath your inner hoop. On top of your outer hoop. I know all the words today. And then it's a good pressing to get yeah, in Yeah, it's a bit of work. Um, definitely easier to hoop things if you're standing up and can get pressure over them. And if you're sitting down. But that's okay. Well, now I have extra scraps for something fun. Yeah. Normally there's a stiletto right here, but there's not a stiletto right here today. Because so. it's right here. Oh, it ran away. It rolled. <laughs> so definitely get that tight. 
And I don't want it jumping for freedom. Nope. That feels nice and tight. Yep. Awesome. Okay. And now I take the fun thing. Let's score the paper. Paper layer comes off and leaves you with the sticky, sticky for your, um, to hold your, to hold your towel in place. Yay! Okay. They definitely kicked the garbage you can over. You definitely kicked the garbage can over. Dropping the pen cap, which I should probably get from the marker. <laughs> <laughs> what else did you throw on the floor over there? I'm making a mess today. Yeah, that sounds good. I'm actually playing 52 pickup while we do Facebook. I thought it would be fun. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, so the next thing I would do, if you're not super comfortable with pooping, you are more than welcome to draw on your stabilizer. Um, if you don't have your templates that came with it nearby or what have you, the one thing I can definitely recommend is this is a wee bit easier if you've got, yeah, that'll work. If you've got a mark inside your hoop for sector. Okay. Um, try it this will make it easier to show where everything is landing as well. Uh, that looks roughly center. Yep. The nice thing is the sticky back stabilizer is holding my ruler in place for me. Okay, and then I could go roughly center off of here, which would land us at probably right about there. Yeah, that's probably pretty close. <laughs> the same pen lid. <laughs> but this time it went into the garbage can. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> Fantastic. There we go. So definitely using using your templates is really your first choice, um, but I know for some people it's it's a challenge. So this is this is the other way you can handle this. Um, so with your tea towel, the easiest way to start this is to find that center point that we marked, the center center where we want the center of the design, and fold that into quarters. But we want to fold right sides together, yes. right? Okay. Yeah, so right now I can see that blue line right there through your fabric. Perfect. And One more uh, we're sideways too, right? Yeah, so on the machine here, uh, my design, your design, your design, is Our design. sideways with the top of the trailer pointing up towards um, the connection where the hoop goes in. All right. So. So... Because I want the top of my design, that in frame, yep. kind of pointing that way. This is my little folded bit. We'll line that up. I'm just going to push it in. And then we'll unfold and smooth out our towel. Well, the nice thing here, it is sticky stabilizer. So it will hold this in place for us. And if it was, like, wildly out of skew, we could go back in and um, take it off. And yeah. you could do the same thing with 505. Much, much easier than uh, actually pooping your tea towel. Uh, but the one thing you can check at this point, um, this blue line where we have marked the bottom of our design is pretty much parallel with the inside edge of that hoop. Yeah, it, it does. So that's where you would... Like if you're anchoring off the band on a towel that has the textured band, if you're anchoring off a stripe um, of some sort, that stripe near the edge of your hoop is usually your indicator that things will be straight above where your hoop is or where your the straight in your towel is, whether it's the hem or the edge. You Fantastic. You this is fun to touch. Yeah. Just having fun smoothing it. All right, so to move this over, I'm just going to plop my towel on top of my hoop just so nothing gets snagged and 
it doesn't get yanked off of my sticky back stabilizer. And then do you want to hit close up on that? And we take this to the machine. Oh dear. <laughs> going to gently fold the bulk of all that towel over the, the arm and up to the other side. Oh, Leah, would you use the sticky back stabilizer for a towel as well? Or fluffy towels? Yep. They're really, fluffy towels are really hard to hoop. They're usually a whole lot thicker, thicker than you think. So floating them on sticky stabilizer is fantastic. Mind you, if you had a brother, a magnetic hoop would be quite lovely also for that. Also fantastic, yeah. <laughs> magnetic hoop, sticky back stabilizer, combination of the above. Whatever's going to make your life the easiest. Yes. Um, you don't, some things that have pile like that, you don't want to crush them, hooping them. Because they will, they will crush. And then you will be crushed. <laughs> that was cute. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I crushed my heart a little. <laughs> okay. Um, so before before we get any further, I would check placement on this. Um, you might be really awesome at folding in quarters and getting centered in the hoop. You might not be. Um, depending on the placement tools on your machine, you might have different options. Um, this particular machine that I'm using has what's called pinpoint placement. So I'm just going to double check with pinpoint placement that it's straight and... Um, centered. So, go to pinpoint placement. Oh, it it wants. If you get this symbol on your Bernina, it's not ready for the hoop. Take the hoop off. Let it burp and wiggle. And then when it shows error down, then put the hoop on. <laughs> probably probably the most common question I get from new embroiderers with Berninas. Like, but it shows me the hoop moving. You need to do the first one with no hoop in place. So in pinpoint placement, under I for info, this is pinpoint placement. We can choose which point in the design we want to be working with. I'd like to start with my center point. And with this, we can use our stitch length and stitch width knobs to check that we are where we want to be. And move it over slightly. Oh, <gasps> I missed it. <laughs> it's okay. We've got placement tools on We sure do. And are you just dropping the needle to see if it hits close to the crosshairs? Yeah. Cool. That's pretty easy. Because I want... I want this bang center. And again, you could have checked this with a template ahead of time and reseated the towel. I don't have a template right next to it. So what other tools do we have? Um, so that first point is good. I'm going to hit set. And then I'm going to use this bottom point, which is the bottom center of our design, as my second point. And looking at it here. Wow, wow we're cooking. <laughs> but that's okay. there. Um, if you're using pinpoint placement, you only want to use one knob on your second set because that'll just rotate your design. If you use two, you'll skew your design, which is very weird. Oh, that sounds fun. But also, like, my design wouldn't look perfect anymore. <laughs> there yeah. we go. Stretched out. So I can close out of that. Close out of that. I'm going to the uh, needle dot 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 or this like ready to embroider screen. Um, there's one more icon we can turn on here and this is a basting box. So if your machine has the ability to do a basting box, highly recommend doing it when you're using um, sticky stabilizers. Um, if this was much finer font, I'd recommend using uh, something like Stitch H2O, a topping layer on top of your towel. Definitely if you've got a towel with pile, you'll want a topping layer. This is a pretty flat tea towel. This is not, not tiny little embroidery, so it'll be okay. Uh, but that basting box can hold your sticky back, your topping layer in place as well. So I'm going to do your placement line in blue. 
That's fabulous. Or you're not your placement. Basing box. Hold everything together. Yes, it's threaded properly. And making sure that the bulk of the towel is out of the way so it doesn't fall back into it. And your basing box is your check to see did you get it straight enough. It's a lot easier to rip this up than other stitches. That looks straight enough to me. That looks pretty straight to me. Okay. Um, this particular item has some applique in it. Mm -hmm. So the very next line in this uh, stitch out is a placement line for where the fabric goes down. Pretty straightforward and easy. Uh, we're going to do the fabric black. I decide you get a black trailer. Okay. I'm done with that. Okay. Sounds fabulous. Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> do the... Yeah, I know. I've, I've got a plan for your project. <laughs> oh, okay. Does it use all of the random threads I found? Maybe. <laughs> it's always so calming watching it, the machine stitch it out. Right? Maybe my favorite part. placement line and then this comes off your machine to tape your applique fabric in place we oh, have you have tape i found it i right tape here. too we have lots of tape <laughs> um do you match your bobbin thread to the towel or to the top thread being used changing as needed um i'll be honest tea towels i just leave white bobbin thread in most of the time I am not a change thread at every stage person. If people are looking at the back of your tea towels, they're probably looking at your laundry too close and they should be slapped. It's a little weird. Yeah. Yeah. The pretty side is the side you care about. <laughs> uh, if this is something with, uh, say, some cut work in it. Oh, that would be a whole video too. Uh, <laughs> cut work napkin quarters. Put that on the radar. Okay. Super fun. Um, anyway aside i would i would just do bobbin thread as normal so we made sure we covered the placement line don't push down on the hoop while it's up in the air uh, do you want to go back to close up Boop. loop is that the sound the camera makes when we change it yes it sure does <laughs> This is why I don't usually push the button. <laughs> oh, that's why you leave me to do that? Yes. Um, the next line of stitching is our tack down. Um, tack down stitching is usually done to match your fabric. So you don't see it when you go to trim. We're going to check Chelsea's trimming skills today. She's in the trimming chair and I'm in the machine chair. I definitely wanted to do some trimming today. Oh, that's, 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 that's why you sat there? Yes, for sure. And my one exception to the changing bobbin thread, if you're doing tiny, tiny little text, there's some great recipe tea towels from OESD. On those, I would match your bobbin thread. Your ah, top thread. I think I pulled some, like... tidier. Oh, that, mm. I didn't stitch that yet. I'm ahead of myself. <laughs> I was all ready for you to trim that applique, but she, it's not trimmed yet. It's not stitched yet. She just really wants me to get trimming. So excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think we might need some trimming scissors out. Oh, I've got a collection. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> oh, that's fantastic. Little OESD stickers. So, th because this has applique in it, and it is a cotton fabric that you used, um, this won't be super happy to be bleached. No. What if I use some embroidery? Some embroidery? Rob, those have special washing instructions. So just don't okay. wander as normal. Some of those are hand washing. Okay, Some so especially no. got rocks going in. I definitely would have thrown them in the washer and maybe ruined my project. I am very bad at reading instructions. <laughs> okay, 
So tack down line is done. Um, this is just a single run tack down line, so you just have to um, trip cautiously. Um, each um, each company has its own way of digitizing their applique. So there really you do need to test applique from different companies to know how tight to trim to their stitch lines. Um, I've sewn embroidered lunchbox designs before. I would trim pretty tight to those lines. Okay. Like 16th of an inch. So we don't get little threads sticking out. That's quite a wide satin stitch that's going over it, but we don't want to find out the hard way that it wasn't wide enough. Kind of like that? Yep. And if you're having trouble seeing these things as you go, um, you could do that tack down line in a different color. Like a dark gray would blend in well, but, but you... also be visible. Yeah. Mostly it just takes practice trimming. And then uh, Chelsea's got the joy here of being left-handed using right-handed scissors. It's it's a skill you develop working with. Yeah. Unfortunately, <laughs> right there's not a lot of specialty <laughs> curved embroidery scissors that are left-handed. We should have words with them, everybody about that. Yes, we should uh, have a chat with them for sure. There's lots of there's lots of scissors out there that are left-handed, like dressmaker shears and um, regular fabric cutting scissors. We have yep. some uh, super cute tula pink ones. Oh, nice! They're left-handed. Yeah, nice. yeah. And they haven't come home with you yet. Oh no, I already have a set. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> to a pink problem mm -hmm. it's not a problem it's true it's true it's, it's a collection at that point if it's not a problem right this isn't a, a curated collection a curated collection is that the word we're looking for yes i think so we've got more people joining us on youtube from all over the place Lovely to have you guys. And that fuzz will brush off later. Right, I think you're probably good. You think so? I you don't think, think so. I should get a little more here? Do, do, do. Do. There we go. Okay. Back to the machine we go. And unfortunately, this might be a project we start on. Oh, are we going to stitch all the way through this, Chelsea? On camera? I don't know. Are we? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I'll turn this on to high speed mode in a moment. How much stitching is it? 19 minutes. Oh my goodness. That's a lot of stitching. So, do that. Securing stitch. It's got underlay that will help hold those fuzzies in place. As we go. All the fuzzies. All the fuzzies. We'll keep... I turned it off as fast as it will go. Can okay. we talk about the other stuff? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, We were talking about some really cool kitchen towel bundles from OESD. Yeah. And I found them. I have to show this one back because I need it. Okay. <laughs> so we have some really cute cocktail recipes. They're adorable. And they actually have tons of uh, stuff on the back. This yeah. one actually has cookies and pumpkin pie. Yeah, and strawberry kitchen recipe tartan. towel bundles. Yes. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And it has a dry conversion for Nice. That's I did that as a gift. I did that as a gift one year. It was great. It would be so great for like a baking basket or a moving out basket. Right? So the conversion chart is wonderful. Yeah. It would be a good one as yeah, housewarming for 
maybe some kids going to school next year that are moving out. Hint, hint. <laughs> hint, hint. Get out of my house. Uh, <laughs> Dry conversion charts. Electric conversion. And there's six more designs on there that aren't pictured, too. Yeah. Uh, and then this one. It's just cocktails. So many cocktails. Cocktail bundle. Adorable. Okay, this is the one I didn't show because I didn't even forget. I think it's just so cute. <laughs> oh. Which is Owl recipe bundle number three has Christmas and holiday themes. So much fun. These are great gifts. And I found this one. It actually doesn't say specifically that it's for kitchen towels, but it does have some great designs that I think would be lovely. Good luck, there. And I found this one. It goes with buttons. I didn't grab the buttons. These are cute towels. They're so cute. And this is a Kimberbell design. This has a bunch of applique in it. Mm -hmm. And it has a trailer in it, too. Oh, that was pretty cute. It's pretty cute. horrible. You need more trailers. I need more trailers. Or I just need more towels. More towels? More storage for my towels. Yeah. Yeah, I need more space <laughs> for storage in my house. We'll all get there. Uh, I also brought more fun stuff. <gasps> There's so many fun tea towels. I have heard from a little birdie we might be getting some new colors too. We do have new colors for ways to get tea towels coming. Fantastic. I might be that little birdie. Maybe we'll have to do another embroidery when there's tea towels coming. But we found this really cute one, gray polka dot. This one's from Kimberbell. And this one has two in it. So it has stripes and then polka dots. Those would be fantastic. You could make like a hostess gift with these. Totally. Uh, you have a design choice to make on your project. Oh, design choice! Uh, so up next is the word home on your black fabric and your hitch. Ooh. Ooh. So I was going to do the aqua and the gray, but which order do you want them? I thought the hitch should be gray. I think you're right. Or the word hitch should be gray. I'm good with anything. I'm going to do the hitch gray. I'm really easy going, I guess. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> you do you. Okay, you, I'll, I'll keep this going. Fantastic. I'll keep showing off really cute colors. I also like this one. I like this one. Dots and stripes. Oh, and I think this actually went with this one. Nope. Goes with a different design that I did not grab. Uh, they can all go to anything. But this actually says, if you can read this, do the dishes. <laughs> Way too cute. And we found this yellow ones. They're actually so bright. They're awesome. So bright. Are, <laughs> are these color fast too? Um, I don't know. Oh, there is. What are these again? I think you cannot dry bleach low. these. Cold wash, yeah. Those the are. triangle needs no bleachy. Good to know. But your isocord will last forever on it. So that's great. Eat the blue one. That's more the white tea towels that people really like to keep in white. Yeah. Yeah. And oh, I think this one's a new one, Leah. The gingham and pinstripes, yeah. Oh, yeah. Pretty new in store. This would actually make such a cute stamp tea towel. Ah, uh, this one. The gingham one. Yeah. We have so much stamp tea fabric right now, too. Yeah. Oh. And we found another design. <laughs> this don't, doesn't read like adult camping. This would be like kids' camp. That's uh, wrong, wrong button. Wrong camera. <laughs> Good try. Uh, this is Lumberjack Life. It's really cute. It is. A uh, new fabric in store this week Ooh. is from. It is Healing Waters from right. Northcott. And it's by an Ojibwe artist. 
I mean, it's stunning. It's so pretty. I think we threw links. We and did. We threw links for it. There it's are up on the web. It's here in the store. It's here. Healing water. It's beautiful. Oh, and I forgot my Flacco ESB towel. Good. So many towels. It's great. I think I ran out of place up the show. Okay. We just have stabilizer left. We already talked about some stabilizer. We sure did. We sure did. Uh, this is just going to be a stitch it. Sure is. For another 13 minutes. Fantastic. Do you want to talk for 13 minutes? Do you want to talk for 13 minutes? What are we going to talk about for 13 minutes? I don't know. What's coming up this week, Leah? Uh, there's a Bardina sale still going on until June 30th. There is. There is. Um, quite a few people jumped on that today. Yeah. It's off and out front today. Um, if you guys missed the uh, Facebook Live yesterday, our store tour, uh, we moved like a third of the store around yesterday. <laughs> Nobody can find anything. <laughs> we did a thing. We did a thing. <laughs> uh, we found some good stuff that, that just, like, fluffed and rearranged. Yeah. Uh, spreads all in a different place than it was last week. So if you're a regular yeah. in-store shopper, best of luck. If you're shopping on our web store, you don't have to go hunting. No, it's already there. It's already it's there, good. and our staff will do the hunting for you. It's great. So you, could, sure. you could free shop that if you're not ready for the change in the store. It's like moving the milk in the grocery store. We apologize, but it needed to happen. Sometimes you have to move the milk. Sometimes you have to move the milk. Sometimes it's really fun. Yeah. Um, I could drop a big hint about a thing that is going to be... <clears throat> I can't drop a hint. My throat wants to give out. It's like, no, you can't drop a hint. Um, mystery thing coming your way on Friday. Um, July 1st is Canada Day, so we are not open. Yeah. But we will have an email newsletter go out with a new thing. Ooh, what's the new thing? I can't tell you, it's a mystery. Ooh. So you I gotta like... sign up for our e-news. I like a good mystery. Me too. Will you tell me later? Uh, you might already know. I think I They know. can't know until Friday. Some of them might know. Maybe. Maybe. There's a mystery. There is a mystery. It's gonna be super fun. I think so. It's like a year-long mystery. Mm. <laughs> Very exciting. A year-long and hanging out with us kind of mystery? Yeah. Oh. Potentially learning things that you didn't know before, so they're not a mystery anymore. Maybe with mystery guests. Maybe. Uh, this sounds fun. I might have to join. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I'm so excited. So yeah, watch your emails for that on Friday. If not, we'll have more of a launch next week online. Yeah, next week. That's exciting. Sometime like July 4th. Uh, maybe July 4th? July 5th? July 4th, Monday. Yes. We can do it July 4th. We could. We could do it on a Monday. We could do it on a Monday. Check in with us on a Monday to solve the mystery. If you have a guess, maybe drop it below? Maybe. You're allowed to comment and say what you think the mystery might be. We won't say if you're right. We won't say if you're wrong. But you're allowed to cast your opinion on the matter. <laughs> Definitely. Throw your opinion out. Yeah, it would be fun. Um, so those are kind of the two super big things this week. Um, moving into Jill. Oh. This is the other thing we need to talk about. August 5th is our next big Camberbell event. Um, and there's, we're embroidering on napkins, we're embroidering on the table runner, and we're making some napkin rings all in the hoop. Um, we need to finalize numbers for that event by the end of this week so we can get kids here and out to our viewers on time. So it's a class where you can join us in person or over Zoom. So it's called Harvest Table, August 5th, one day embroidery event. Um, there's always a really great bonus CD from Kimberbell available. There it is. Um, we've got a few people in store already, so get them in our space in, online if you don't want to haul your machine here, but just say we have air conditioning. We sure do, and I'm sure this August is going to be a hot one. Just like every other August. <laughs> <laughs> 
also hanging out in store with Chelsea and I sounds like a pretty great idea. It does. And if you wanted to try embroidery, like if what you're seeing today looks fun, but you're nervous to get started on your own, come to an event because it's a great place to give it a try with support. Somebody. Are we done pointing? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I was pretending like I wasn't doing that. Um, and so that is August 5th. Our next big event after that is September 29th, 30th, and October 1st. We have an OESD instructor coming for a one-day lecture demo on stabilizers and embroidery techniques called Embroidery Essentials, and then two days of embroidery stitch along here in store only um, called Stitching in the Kitchen. It's going to be really cool. I am. And the, uh, the goodie bags with OESD, the last ones we got, there's so much great stuff in there. Yeah. So if you're looking for an early fall event to attend and you're thinking you might, might want an embroidered machine, you don't need to own one before the event. No, you don't. You Please. just come borrow ours. Yeah. Borrow ours, give it a shot, see what happens. You might decide you love it. And you need one. Yeah, maybe you need one. <laughs> I need one. Right. <laughs> How much more embroidery can I do for you here in the studio? That's a good question. More? Every week. That looks fun. We should switch how it's looking. Ah! Um. How much longer does it have left? Yeah. Eight minutes after I get it threaded. That's not long. No. That's pretty quick. Very nice tea towel in under half an hour, really. Okay. Been on here a while, but we were chat. <laughs> when we talked about the other placement first, I keep forgetting to get that before I start the other one. Ruff, ruff. I'm ahead of myself. Okay. Sometimes that happens. Sometimes it does. Going. It's going. It's going. So what other fun things are going on? All this new fashion fabrics. Oh gosh. And there's more on the way. I know. So much on the double gauze. Oh gosh. You know, I think it's gonna get to 30 degrees again this year. Yesterday was a high 27. Did you know that? It was hot out yesterday. It was so hot. But yeah. double gods. So cool. That'd be Crazy. so luxurious for that weather. Yeah. I need to make it to all that. Right? Or dress. Dress would be cute. Dress would be so cute. Dress would be so cute. We printed ends all these days. Yeah. There's some cute, cute stuff in there. Why? I like riding full speed. <laughs> you like hitting the rabbit. <laughs> uh -huh. There's a rabbit on screen. It makes your bird machine go faster from you, Leah. It's it's a great. Thing. Pretty much, if I can embroider at full speed, I will. There's times where you should definitely slow down, like metallic thread That's or definitely. a specialty fabric. What if you're going to like foam? That thick foam that sometimes you usually simmer about? Yeah, sometimes I slow down for especially things like that. Okay. Pretty much if I can run my embroidery full speed annoying, I do. Um, partly because there's too much I want to embroider to go slow. But he is always embroidered. Also, from a machine tech standpoint, the machines are built to run that fast and they auto regulate their speed down from the stitch pull. So it will slow down where it needs to, but if it can run fast, it does. Yeah, it totally does. It'll slow down if it's a bit denser, though. Or if it's a really wide stitch, it'll slow down. Yeah, it's so like a wide static stitch. Um, we'll always be this far. Ooh, have we done a class for sewing with gauze? No. That's another great question. Add that to the list. Gauze. Pretend adding it to the list. I'll add it to the list. You'll add it to the where's, list? Where's my list maker? I don't know. My list I maker's have my list maker. over yonder and... Not talking to me. Let's put that in education plan. <laughs> We're making a list. And checking it twice. 
maybe find out he's naughty or nice. Oh, we don't have to worry about that till oh, Christmas in July or Christmas, Christmas. Okay. Christmas. We maybe we do need a Christmas naughty list in July. I don't know. That sounds really fun. <laughs> I will be on the good list. I'm gonna be on the naughty list because, well, I'm a disaster. <laughs> <laughs> Great time. <laughs> it's pretty fun having you here. <laughs> so it's four minutes to go. Four minutes. Four minutes. Four minutes. We're nearly there, and then we can show up what your towel looks like. That's great. Yeah. That was really fast. I expected that to be a great Oh, apparently people like watching the embroidery channel, so we're good. It's very relaxing. I like finding how many other things I can do while I watch the embroidery channel. <laughs> Well, right now we're having a good conversation. I would be prepping my next towel. That would be really good. I do have one more towel. We'll have to figure out something to do with it. Maybe next week, Barb will teach me something on this towel instead. Maybe. That sounds great. Maybe some hand embroidery? She just ran her long hand embroidery. She sure did. So much cool stuff in there. Maybe. That was recorded. If you guys didn't watch the hand embroidery class, you can still sign up for it. You definitely can. There was a lot of information. I'm saying 12 things. weeks of hand embroidery. Hour and a half a week. Just a few videos to catch up on. Just a few. Just a few. Lots of good info. Yeah. She is kind of the queen of hand embroidery. Is she the queen or another princess? Santa's the queen. She can be the princess. Princess of Hand Embroidery. <laughs> I'll be the princess of, of Machine Embroidery. <laughs> can I be the princess of playing around in class? <laughs> Ought it be Snap? I don't think so. I think it just didn't pick up the bottom. Row. So that's okay. We'll back up a couple stitches. <laughs> it wants me to actually rethread it. Okay. When you get excited thinking you're actually off she goes. Fun. It's a fun. It's it's not a, it's a step fill, not a satin stitch. Yeah, so it'll be harder to snag when I'm out in the bush. That's yeah. nice. My boyfriend maybe won't wreck the towel. Let's put a big disclaimer on the top. Chelsea's only. Don't touch if your name is them. <laughs> I'm kidding. I usually make things and they get dirty and then I wash them and then they get dirty later it's okay and then you wash them again yeah 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 it's part of life doing yeah. laundry and out back camping <laughs> do it again Just... beautiful recovery you need the oil sometimes if the tail cut too short on a machine like this you need oil oh that's good to know yeah i did not know that i need it cleaned as well like the thread cover <laughs> sometimes it just needs oil i don't know when i have last oil the studio machine <laughs> i don't know either so maybe that's a later okay. well maybe you'll have to have clip hang out with me and we can uh do an oiling video totally show how to oil all your bermudas yeah each machine has its own happy way of being oiled. Lots of machines don't need to be oiled by the user, but anything with a metal hook. Yeah. And a metal bobbing case or hook moving in a metal race. So, needs to be oiled. 
all of the Bernina's. Yeah. The PQ1500 from Brother. Yeah. The multi needles from Brother. Yeah. Not the Brother domestic. Like the rest of the domestic. Yeah. So drop in plastic bottles. Like, yeah. They don't need to oil. We oil them when you get service. Yeah. They need to be oiled deeper inside the machine. Way deeper. Wait, yeah. you can't get Yeah. If we do get there, we may have avoided your warranty. Yeah. Don't, don't let your helpful husband in there. Don't do that. Or don't let your helpful wife in there. You could have either. But yeah. Yeah. Or don't let you in there. Don't let you in. <laughs> that seems reasonable. This is cute. It is really cute. I'm actually like just loving how it turned out. Yeah. And then all I have to do is go home and wash it. Give it a quick burn. Easy, easy. Both the blue marker out and your stabilizer off. Oh yeah, because these uh the Aqua Mesh Plus. And it washes away. Yeah. Really easy. Totally. Should I take off the extra of it first? Yeah. So it doesn't get schmutzy? Yeah. Yeah, trim to about a quarter inch round, but Okay. And then take off the rest. That sounds pretty easy. I can do that. You totally can. <laughs> It's almost done. I can't wait. Oh. Then hold it up like a tea. With the stabilizer, I'll fold it in behind it. I can make some space to hold. My pile of goodies. And you'll probably want to trim jump stitches before you push Just go to the front. Okay. Just leave the back? Yep. Sounds good. Yeah, yeah, exactly. keeps it a little more securely than the back jump stitches in place. Unless they're fingered in the city, but these ones won't be able to Well, and nobody is going to be using this for if, dishes. If people are touching the back of your tea towels again, they probably need a slap. <laughs> That's my fault. They're making your tea towels dirty. Honestly, I'm probably going to hang this in the bathroom. Because then it only gets clean water touched on it. Yeah. It's my theory. Not, like... We have an barbecue issue. Barbecue sauce hands. Exactly. We have an issue if people are fully washing their hands and then drying their hands. <laughs> well, that's so cute. Oops. Got some tape everywhere. So you could um, flip that over for just a second. Um, if you did do a basting box, easier to pop the basting box. Oh, I had, I wonder what I was doing last. I definitely did that with blue bobbin thread for you. Whatever I embroidered last well, was blue. Well, that's fun. <laughs> I like that. It works. It works. Matches most of it, to be honest. And you don't need to trip, trim that many. You could probably lift in this corner. Okay, and then just tear it out. Yep. The bobbin thread is under more tension. Wee. Get a bigger gripping area for that one. And again, easier to do it when it's still in the hoop afterwards. This is much easier than doing the last thing I ripped <laughs> from a hoop. I definitely didn't do it this way. This is very knowledge. There's definitely a knot here. Let's take out that knot. Then that should come out. Yeah. I flip it over to the front. All of that lifts off. Just a little bit. So fantastic. Like Leah's hacks. I have a few. He's based in boxes a lot. I have to take them out of everything. <laughs> Basting boxes are wonderful, though. So if you fold that, I can grab two. If you fold that back in thirds, the way you had it originally, pretend you don't have a big chunk of stabilizer in there. Sorry. 
I'll hold that side down. Ah, thank you. Threads everywhere. <laughs> Aww. So other than the weird bit of extra stabilizer sticking out the bottom, it's not weird and floaty. <laughs> <laughs> you got this. <laughs> it's adorable. It's flat. It's so cute. My boyfriend's going to love it. I love it. I love it too. Good job. You might need one when you buy a trailer. Yeah, something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want two places to clean. I'm gonna have trouble doing That's keeping fair. one house clean. Step stitch is lovely on the big letters. It's not snagging at all. Yeah. That's so a nice lovely. That's a nice detail. Mm hmm That is great. I think it looks fantastic. So cute. Home is where the hitches. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so that is our run through of how to mark both a clutch bag for embroidery and a tea towel very successfully got a tea towel all embroidered don't leave your embroidery floaty on your tea towels you'll be happier yeah inch and a half or like quarter inch to half an inch from the band or the stripe that's my recommendation i like it um if you liked watching this demo today highly recommend you hit the thumbs up or the like button and the subscribe and hit the bell for notifications on YouTube. And all of those. All of those things. Because the more you guys like it, the more we can do. Most definitely. Most definitely. Um, and if there's more things you'd like to see, throw them in the comments. Um, we had a couple of really great suggestions up there today. So uh, we take all of those. We have a great big running list of things you guys would like to see. And we will keep posted as they come up. Mm -hmm. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks for joining.